This is Dan, and this is the Napkin Academy. This lesson is the second half of applied napkin sketching. This is part two, and this is drawing digitally. We left off last time where I was emphasizing that when it comes time to drawing, I really, 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 really want you to draw by hand. But as we pointed out, it is time to transition a bit because we are moving into a world which is much more digitally based. And we're not talking about digital where the word originally comes from as in our fingers. We're talking about digital as in the kind of stuff that runs on these machines. So we're going to make a little bit of a transition. We're going to continue to draw by hand, but we're going to take advantage of the technology that is available We'll remember, quick review, that there were three types of drawing surfaces that we use. The personal drawing surface, where it's myself or just me and you drawing out our idea together, very spontaneous. The participatory drawing surface, which is bigger, where we get our team together and we can work on a problem. And then, of course, the third one was performance, where I am pretty much broadcasting from one person to many how my final drawing wants to come together. Now. Here's what I'd like to share with you. We talked about this being done on paper, this being done on a big whiteboard, and performance being done on, well, what? Because we can't do it on a sheet of paper, no one will see it. We can't even do it on a big whiteboard because no one will be able to see it. So we need something else. And this is where the technology comes in. Here's what we're going to do. All three of these we can enable digitally. Let's talk first of all about the hardware. I am going to run you through exactly the system right now that I use and I have used for the last five years. This system works. This system is tested. It is proven. It is easy. And it probably takes advantage of software that 99.9% .9 of us already have. Let's start with the hardware part. I own a Lenovo X220 tablet PC and that's what I'm working on right now. Formerly IBM purchased a few years ago by Lenovo. ThinkPad tablet. Alright, this is what it looks like when it's closed. When it opens up, it looks like anybody else's regular laptop. This is what you get. Now the interesting thing about the fact that this is the tablet version and if you want to go out and get a machine like this, you absolutely have to make sure that you buy the tablet version because of what I'm about to show you. Once I've opened the computer, I can do something interesting. I can rotate the screen around, and guess what? Tucked in the little side is a stylus because this is the machine that enables me to draw on the screen. That's why it's called tablet. So what happens is after I folded it all down, this is what my machine looks like to me right now. The keyboard's folded away behind the back. I have a blank screen on which I can draw any old thing that I want. I can draw my stick figures. And for those of you that have hung with me through all of these lessons, we're in the second to the last one. Yeah, -hoo! absolutely, we're almost done. What, 42 lessons down, one to go. Every one of these lessons I've drawn using this stylus on this computer, drawing on the screen exactly as I'm doing right now. Doesn't matter what we want to draw. We're in our room. On my table, I have my folded up tablet PC, my pen. I sit there and I draw like mad. There I am. Hi, guys. Happy to see you. So that's what I use. Now, many people are going to say, okay, Dan, that's great for the hardware. But what magical, crazy piece of software am I using to do this really rapid fire drawing? Are you ready? Are you all sitting down? Remember, if I can draw a picture, I will. Here's what I want all of you to do. I want you all to sit down because something crazy is about to happen. I use PowerPoint. I am drawing using nothing but PowerPoint 2007. And you're saying, Dan, you must be raving mad because everybody knows that you cannot draw 
in PowerPoint. There must be some other magical piece of software that you have on top of it. Something that's related to the tablet. Something that's related to the stylus. Something that's special for this kind of machine. Nope. I am really happy to tell you that all it is is PowerPoint. And I'm going to prove it to you right now. Watch this. Down here in the lower part of my screen, I'm in PowerPoint, there are a series of icons. One of them is a pen. If I click on that pen, it allows me to choose pens to use. Let me prove to you what I'm talking about. I'm going to actually uh, escape, and I want to keep my notations, and I want to continue recording. I want you to look at my screen now. You'll see that I am using PowerPoint the same as anyone else. Here are my images, and let's say I wanted to draw on this page, and I wanted to draw something, a stick figure. Well, I would say here's my tools, uh, but where are my drawing tools? I don't know where they are. I can't find them. If I wanted to draw a circle, I guess the only thing I could do would be to go and pick this circle tool and draw a circle. That's not what I wanted. How is it that Dan is able to draw these pictures? Here's how. In PowerPoint, go ahead and make your slides as you normally would. Then go into presentation mode. Roll over these icons in the lower corner. One of them is a pen. Call up that pen. Pick felt tip pen. And then you even have the ability to pick the color that you want. And now guess what? You can draw directly on your PowerPoint slide. You can draw anything that you want. I'm going to keep doing this to prove how cool this is. So let's say that uh, I wanted to show you, as we've done many times, how to draw a stick figure. Well there I go, I'm drawing one. The reason I'm able to do this is because again, I'm in present, let's go through the list. PowerPoint, blank slide, or you could have something on your slide, doesn't matter. Go to presentation mode. Presentation mode. Scroll down and scroll over these icons in the lower left. The reason I'm writing this is because I'm not sure as I record this if you're able to see them well. I know that you have them. Uh, they're in every version of PowerPoint uh, that's been around since uh, PowerPoint was created for the most part. Pick the pen tool, pick the color, and now you can draw. And the really remarkable thing, as you've already seen once, is then when you're done, you say in the show, and PowerPoint, bless its little heart, says, do you want to keep your notations? If I say keep, continue recording, you'll notice that now I've got all my object, the little stick figure I drew, as a cut and paste vector object that I can make as many of them as I want. I can save them as long as I want. Look at that. I can cut them and move them apart uh, and, and make as many versions of that little guy as I want to. So that's the real magic. Probably one of the most important lessons I can share with you is how to use just garden variety PowerPoint uh, on a tablet to draw anything that you'd like. You don't even have to use the tablet. You could be using uh, a standard laptop, drawing with your mouse, but as we know, trying to draw with a mouse over here and have it appear over here is a terrible thing to do, which is why I love the tablet, so I can draw directly on the screen. And then the way that I'm capturing this so that uh, I can share these lessons with you is all I'm doing is on top of my PowerPoint, I've got another application, which is called Camtasia Studio. I actually use version number 7, which is a screen recording tool. And all I have to do is turn it on and say, you know, record the screen. And as I am drawing on PowerPoint, I'm talking through a headset. There I am, talking through my headset. Recording all of it through Camtasia. And then when I'm done, I'm just going to stop. And then I'll be able to edit my file in Camtasia, cut out some of my uh, sometimes too many words and sometimes little goofs and things, cut those out using the simple tools in Camtasia, and then go ahead and save the video clip, paste it online, and that is how I'm able to share 
my lessons with you. Now, some of you who are associates know that we also do live webinars. If you're an associate, and I encourage all of you, of course, to upgrade to the associate level just because it's a whole lot of fun. If you're an associate, you'll know that we go through these lessons in real time virtually face to face and the reason is because I'm drawing in PowerPoint on my tablet PC while broadcasting through GoToWebinar. Now you don't have to use GoToWebinar, you could also go use, um, what's the other one, WebEx or any one of the uh, online broadcasting tools. The point is you don't need any of the drawing software that's often embedded in these tools because all you need to do is go to, to GoToWebinar launch PowerPoint, start talking and start drawing, and guess what? The whole thing is being broadcast worldwide to anyone who's dialed in. It is awesome. The word is, this is incredible. Have to put these pieces together, but once you do, you've got it. So here's the entire package. Tablet PC, running PowerPoint for drawing, recording it through Camtasia for uh, saving as movies, and broadcasting it through GoToWebinar and Presto. There you've got it worldwide presentation toolkit with a bunch of simple tools that probably the most important one PowerPoint you've already got. So what does this tell us is remember we had our participatory drawing system. Now let's say that this group of people is located at various corners around the planet. Well guess what using the structure that I just shared with you it is possible for this group to draw on this virtual whiteboard, again, which is nothing more than PowerPoint, shared through GoToWebinar. How cool is that? And what I also do and have now done thousands of times is when it comes time for me to make my performance drawing. In a way, what I'm doing right now with you, but instead of uh, a taped version in front of a live audience, what I do is I take my same old tablet PC, I hook it up to the projector, and I draw on the screen and as you can imagine what happens is as I draw on the screen the whole thing appears live and all these people go oh my gosh how is it possible that Dan is able to draw for us live on top of his screen that's how you now have probably one of the most important secrets of anything that I've been able to share with you in the napkin Academy this is the one you know what go use it tomorrow in fact go use it tonight launch your PowerPoint launch those drawing tools start drawing which brings us to one more drawing surface. You might remember that there was the simple one, the personal one. I want to draw by myself to help discover an idea or I want to work, you know, maybe at a cafe. We're sitting at a table, sipping our coffee, just the two of us, and we want to share an idea. Well, my gosh, I don't need to bring my tablet PC with me. My strongest recommendation, of course, is just draw on a sheet of paper and then, as we talked about in the last session, take a photo of it. But we know that we do live in this modern digital world and more and more people are getting an iPad. Well, an iPad for many people is kind of the equivalent of a sheet of paper because after all, you know, if especially if you get a stylus, which you can, I don't know which particular brand, uh, there's lots of them, any one of them is fine, you know, I can draw on top of my iPad and it's automatically digital and it's automatically saved and I can do interesting things with it you know probably there's some application I suppose where I can change the color or I can add fonts or uh, you know whatever it is that I want to do on my iPad okay so you're gonna ask which software would one want to use I'll tell you there are three basic options as far as I know I do use my iPad quite a bit and here's what I find option number one something called pen ultimate Pen Ultimate. Nice, uh, simple tool, really bare bones, just enough to be able to make very simple drawings on your iPad. If we go a little bit more sophisticated, there's a new app that people are very excited about called Paper. Paper by 53. Paper, uh, it's kind of interesting. It's got a sort of a book like interface. It's got a whole slew of tools. Interestingly enough, the way you pay for it is you actually have to buy things like additional tools and buy color so it does cost money so you're adding on to your cost in order to do it but people uh, I have not used paper much myself but many people have said that paper is pretty cool and then if you want the full-on here it comes everything oh my gosh more bells and whistles than you could ever ever possibly need you go to Autodesk sketchbook 
Pro. And I got to tell you, there are so many cap capabilities within this application, and it's, uh, in my humble opinion, it's a victim of the 80-20 rule, meaning that 80% of the time you're going to use 20% of the tools, which is why, in the end of the day, when I draw on my iPad, I just use the simplest software that's out there. But I'm not saying that's the only one. These others exist, and they're all fine. They're all great. If you really want to draw on your iPad, go ahead and feel free to use any one of those apps. But what I'd really like to share with you, when it comes time to go digital, be judicious. Meaning, what I really want us to do, I don't want us to get so excited about the new technologies that we let them mask the fact that what we really, really want to do is just take a simple old piece of paper, take our famous Sharpie pen, and just draw on it. So thanks, guys. There's one more lesson. I want to thank you for having stayed with me this long. Next one, we say goodbye now. We'll pick it up with our final concluding lesson. Thanks.